This is a no-nonsense guide for you to do the main quest easter egg in the brand new zombies map, Shadows of Evil. The easter egg requires you to have four players in your game, or you can do it solo if you're using the PC mod, which I've linked in the description down below. First of all, for choosing your gobble gums, I would recommend Perkaholic if you've got it, Pop Shocks for Margoires, Fatal Contraption because death machines will be useful, Fear in Headlights for the flag step, and finally Round Robin to progress some steps faster. The first step is to collect several items using beast mode and you get a beast mode charge by completing a round and you'll see your charge in the corner of your screen here. This is what the beast mode fountain looks like and it's got a cooldown on it so when you use it it will then be on cooldown until the end of the current round and then it will become active again. So the first item we're going to collect is in the spawn area and you need to open the door first before you go into beast mode. There's something I want you to remember to do here when you first open that door and that's to look for where the tram goes. It's going to go to one of the districts in the map and you just need to spy where whereabouts it's going to, just to save you some time later, but it's not mission critical if you miss it, don't worry. Then activate beast mode in that spawn room, destroy the summoning key box on the truck, and then zoom over and zap the crane electric box in order to get the quest item that we need. And then with your remaining beast mode time, I would rappel up to Nero's lair and run through to zap the stairs so that you can get back up to there easily later in your game. Then when your beast mode expires, you need to go back to some of the boxes that you just broke and pick up the items that you can find now from inside. So on the truck in the spawn area, you're going to find the summoning key, grab that, and then go over to the crane that we zapped and the box that's broken there is going to reveal a lawyer's pen on the floor that you can pick up. Now it's picking up that quest item, the lawyer's pen, that is going to trigger a little sequence of events here that I'm going to refer to as the rituals. The first thing that will happen is when you pick up the quest item, two keepers will spawn in that you will need to kill. And then you're going to want to bring the quest item back up the stairs that we zapped at the end end of our beast mode and head into Nero's lair. By placing the quest item, the pen, and the summoning key on the altar, we'll trigger a ritual that will begin and you just need to survive that. You don't need to kill zombies, you just need to live. And after 15 to 30 seconds, the ritual will end, the zombies will disappear, and a gate worm will spawn in on top of the altar, which you can grab. That's item number one. Now, before we move on to item number two, you'll notice that the perks on this map also need zapping in order to activate them. So it might be the that at some point you decide to zap stamina up, for example, so that you can then buy that perk. And this will apply to the other perks around the map as well. For the purpose of the guide, though, we're just going to move on to the next item. And to choose which one is best for you in your game, we're going to look at these broken bottles. These indicate whereabouts Jug is in your game. So you're looking for the red broken bottle, and that's the location that you need to go to. For me, that's Footlight, so we'll do that next. Also, just a word of warning is on your second and fourth rituals that you do. So that's this next one coming up. You're going to have a Magua spawn in. So you are going to want a little bit more firepower in order to take that down and to survive the process. For Footlight, we're going to use the beast mode near the entrance and we're going to break the box on the right in the alleyway first. We're also going to break the teleporter door and then we're going to look up and rappel to the top by the box location. You then need to jump across and smack the box down and then jump back across to the rooftop run outside and repel to the burlesque and then zap the box. Once you've done all that and your beast mode expires or you cancel it early, run over to pick up your quest item, which in this case is a toupee, and that will spawn in some keepers. But once you've taken them out, you can bring the toupee to the burlesque and on the way there, activate the teleporter on the left-hand side so you can use that later and then place the toupee on the altar with the summoning key, do the ritual and then have one of your teammates pick up the next gateworm for you. The objectives in Waterfront are a little tricky to do all in one go. So I'm just going to show you it split into two separate beast modes. We're going to pick up beast mode from the entrance to waterfront and using that we're going to zap the stairs from the street or we can rappel up and zap the stairs there as well. And then we're going to head over and break the box in the back room. And then separate to that, okay, and this could be a teammate as well for the record, we're going to use another beast mode in the middle section of waterfront. And with this one, we're going to rappel to the box and smack that box. We're going to break the teleporter door and and we're going to break the door of the boxing ring as well. And that's at the end of the waterfront. And that's where we're going to be doing our next ritual. So go grab your quest item, which in this case is a championship belt. Kill the keepers that will spawn in. And then on your way back to the boxing ring, activate the teleporter in the alley just here so that we can use that later. And then run down the docks and buy the HVK potentially as well, because it's just a really good weapon to have. And then enter the box 
boxing ring, place the belt and the summoning key on the altar, do the ritual, and then have one of your teammates grab the gateworm for you. When you head into the canals, you need to use beast mode near the entrance area and then jump down into the sewers to break a door here, which you need to bash open in order to be able to teleport underground later. And you're also going to want to zap the box inside the wall of the sewers by the stairs. And then there's just two things left to do. One of them is to choose whether you either want to repel up to the top of the ruby rabbit and then go down the stairs and zap at the bottom or you can just stay stood outside between the harvest pod and the egg statue and jump shot the electric box from outside. So that's that's one thing that you need to do. And the other thing is to break the box to the right to reveal the statue inside it. Again, if you don't manage to do all of this in one beast mode, you can just grab another charge from another round. And also once your beast mode ends or you cancel it early, remember to go and actually pick up the item that we need for the quest. In this case, it's going to be a badge. And again, that's going to spawn keepers in. I'd recommend you activate the tele teleporter in this little room here so that we can use that later. And then you need to take the badge through to the ruby rabbit to do another ritual. Place the badge and the summoning key on the altar, do the ritual, and then at the end of it, have one of your teammates grab another gateworm for you. At this point, you have all four rituals done, which means you have four gateworms, and that means you can use any of the teleporters that we've opened up the doors to to teleport underground. When you get down there, there'll be a bunch of keepers that spawn in. You can kill those and then head over where I'm showing you in the gameplay here and and assuming you've done all the rituals like I explained, you should have yellow glowing apothecon writing on this wall. And when you approach the wall, it will break and that will reveal a new chamber inside. And this is actually where Pack Punch is on this map. Once you get into that room, you and your teammates should place two of your worms in the left and right fountains on the side of the room that you're currently standing in. And then you can wall run on the left or the right sides of the room to get to the other side where the pap portal is. When you get there, have your teammates place the other two worms that you've got remaining in the two open fountains. And then when you go to the middle of the room there, a magical broken bridge will reappear. And be careful here because it's very easy to be impatient and just jump off the edge basically. But once that bridge has reformed, you can use it to run and jump back onto the original side that you were standing on. Then you can place the summoning key on this altar just here, and that will trigger your kind of final ritual for the time being. And once that ritual is completed, you can wall run back over to the pack punch portal and use the pack punch it's going to be active now and i would recommend if you bought the hvk like i recommended earlier that you pack a punch it at this time the next step focuses on swords and eggs and to get started with it we need to go to wherever the tram is so remember at the start of the game i said hey remember where the tram goes from spawn that's just to save you some time here so you know exactly which district to run to but if not just run around until you find the tram then take the tram and look out for symbols that are illuminated on the walls as you go on your little journey there's a total of nine symbols, but only three of them are going to be present in your game. And you can spot them by just going footlight to canals, canals to waterfront, waterfront to footlight. Now, the tricky thing is that you're going to need to know which side of the tram to be looking out of in order to spot the symbols. So if you're traveling from footlight to canals, look left for the first glowing symbol and then look out of the right side for the canals symbol. If traveling from canals to waterfront, look left for the canals symbol and continue looking left for the waterfront symbol. And for waterfront to footlight, look right for both symbols. Once you've marked down which symbols you have in your game, you can teleport back to the underground area and use a beast mode. And then you just need to zap the three symbols that you have in your game. Also, while you're doing this beast mode, you can break open the statue box that's down there in the underground. And while you're doing that, you can actually also go up the stairs here and zap the electric box at ground level to open the door. So that you don't have to always teleport down here. You can just run down the stairs from the spawn area as well. Once you've zapped the symbols, a little hole in the wall is going to open up and you'll be able to grab an egg. Place the egg in the statue and then get 10 kills within a pretty close range to it and it will fill up with souls. And you can check the egg's progress here by pulling up the scoreboard and looking at the little icon for it. And then once it's done, it will start glowing. You can pick up the egg and teleport to any location via the rifts in the underground and repeat for all four statues that we opened previously while we were doing all the beast mode stuff. So this statue is just here. Put the egg in, fill it up with souls. It'll start glowing. Pick it up again. Go to the next location. Do the same thing. Here's where the statue is. Fill it up. Get the egg cooking. And then final location, final statue spawn. 
fill that egg up and then you're good to go. With a fully charged egg, return to the underground and place it where you initially picked it up. And then once you wait a few seconds, you'll be able to pick up a sword. Our next task is to upgrade the sword. To do this, you need to return to the ritual room, which corresponds to your character that you're currently playing as. And your teammates are going to need to do this for the character that they are playing as as well. If you're Jessica, you need to go to the burlesque in Footlight. If you're playing as Jackie Vincent, you need to go to the Ruby Rabbit in the canals. If you're Floyd, the boxer guy, you need to go to the boxing ring in the waterfront. And if you're Nero, you need to go to that spawn room, Nero's Lair. When you get there, interact with the keeper that will be standing above the altar and it will take the arch ovum egg from you. And then when that's done, a red circle is going to appear on the ground in four locations and it will be outside the sort of building that you're currently in. You need to bring your arch ovum egg to each of these circles and then when you deposit it, you'll need to kill the margwars that spawn in. This is why I recommended pop shocks at the start of the video. It makes killing margwars a breeze, but you can obviously just do it the normal way. And the best strategy I'd say is to single out one margwar and bait out a slam attack potentially by running up next to it and then running away immediately. And another way that you can make this easier for yourself is by shooting the margwars mouths from left to right immediately after they spawn in. The upgraded HVK can kill them pretty much instantly when all three mouths are exposed during that animation. So you can get an insta kill here really easily. And if during this process you go down, you will fail the step, but it's okay. You can get back up again and then reset by placing the arch ovum back down and it will spawn in more margwars. Now, if you're successful, you're going to have to wait until the next round to go to the next ritual location and place an egg down and get more margwars to spawn in. So this takes several rounds to do. For that reason, it's a good idea to make sure that your teammates are doing their rituals in their areas on the same rounds that you're doing your rituals in your areas so that you can all progress through it together. And also, similar to before, we can check our progress on this via our inventory as well. Once you've done all four little rituals here and the arch ovum is filled, you can take it back to the keeper that you originally took the arch ovum from in your character's little area. And congrats, the sword is now upgraded. Next, we have the infamous flag step. To do this, head into Nero's lair and look for this massive book. Once you find it, interact with it and it will start floating into the air. And then you need to go to the underground and pick up the flag that is then going to have spawned in in the middle of the room. This is going to trigger a round that is filled with only parasites and meatballs. And it's pretty chaotic, so be prepared for this step. With the flag picked up, you need to take it to the purple glowing spot on the ground outside of the footlight entrance and place it down. Then defend the flag against the meatballs. And there is going to be a huge onslaught of these things, so really be on it and coordinating with your team to try and make sure that you're taking down all the meatballs coming at you from all angles. And if you see the shadow man spawn in, shoot him ASAP, because if he's left alone for too long, he will break the flag. If you fail, don't worry, you can reset. If you succeed, though, you'll hear a ding. You can then pick up the flag and move it towards the spawn room. Then place the flag down again and defend it once more, going through the same steps. When that's done, bring the flag up to Nero's room and place it at the altar with the keeper and a Magua will then spawn in alongside a max ammo. Now you might find that you find this quite difficult and if so, I would recommend using the wonder weapon and I have a guide on my channel for how to build it. I'll link it in the description and in the corner of the screen right now. And Lil Arnie's, which you can get from the box, can also be really useful for this. Assuming you have successfully done it though, you're going to need to wait until the next round to do it all over again. And the way the system works is you basically repeat the process again in three more locations. In the canals area, we're going to be placing the flag at the canals bridge entrance and defending. And then the second flag is going to be by the civil protector wall by on the right and before the bridge to the ruby rabbit. That's our second defend point. In the waterfront area, we need to go to the mystery box location or the gobble gun machine and it's just by there. And then the second defend location is near the beast mode up the stairs. Then the footlight area has its first location by the gobble gun machine towards the entrance area. The second location is basically in the street. And once you've done all those, you're on the second last step. The boss fight is the next thing. So this is something I recommend having raindrops or fatal contraption for, but if you've not got any megas, in plain sight is also pretty useful here, to be honest. And you can just do it with regular weapons. That is okay. You're going to need to return to the pack-a-punch room and interact with the 
the Keepers, each of which is linked to one of the fountains that we put the Gateworms in earlier. Once you've interacted with all four of those, the Keepers will break the Shadow Man's barrier, and that means that it's your turn to shoot the Shadow Man as much as you possibly can until he is hovering over the altar towards the entrance of the room. As you do this, he will kind of get knocked back gradually bit by bit, and as soon as he's directly over the altar, you need to interact with the altar to eat up the Shadow Man. It will gobble him up, and so I think the best way to do this, or the easiest way to do this, is to make sure that your team is ready and positioned to shoot the Shadow Man from behind the table facing the Pack-a-Punch. Obviously, someone is going to need to trigger the worms to get him to be broken out of his little protective bubble in the first place. But then if you all just Death Machine and beam him from behind the altar, you should be able to do this pretty damn easily. With him successfully captured inside the summoning key on the altar, you're on the last step of the Easter Egg. And this is where it goes from being soloable up until this point, And it turns into a four-player only Easter Egg. Unless you're using the mod on PC, which I'll link in the description, in which case this whole thing is soloable. Together, all players in the game need to kill Marguars until their beast mode is ready. While doing this, there are little white blobs that you can pick up to make sure that you don't die because you'll gradually take damage over time. Assign one of the players in your team to each of the three tram stations, leaving one remaining player who can stay in the middle of the map. Two out of the three tram station players need to go into beast mode, and so does the middle map person, and they need to wait. Then the last remaining human player who is in one of the tram stations needs to either call the tram to bring the tram towards their location, or if the tram is already there, they need to activate the tram from inside and then very quickly run outside the tram so that they do not ride inside it. Once the tram is moving, that player needs to run down the steps, enter beast mode via a beast mode fountain, and then run back up the steps into the tram station. At this point in time, you have one player in the middle of the map in beast mode waiting, you have a moving tram heading towards the center of the map, and you have three players in beast mode in the tram stations. The three people in the tram stations need to shock the metal box attached to the ceiling of the tram station. They'll know that they've done it correctly if the tram rail itself turns blue when they do this. So the tram station people's jobs is just to turn all three tram rails blue and then their job is done. Meanwhile, your beast mode player in the middle of the map is going to be watching that tram approach. And as soon as that tram squashes the big worm in the middle of the map, the middle map player needs to shock the three keepers which are floating in the sky. You need to make sure that you time this correctly and you do it as soon as the worm has been squashed. And if your other three teammates have all zapped their tram rails blue, the three keepers will fire lasers into the center of the map and you'll have successfully completed the Easter egg. If this has been useful, I'd really appreciate if you left me a comment just saying something nice. See you next time.